with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Yeah. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. <laughs> it's like, because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Welcome. Welcome to The Christian View. What a great audience we have. Thank you all for being here. And thank you for watching us at home or listening by radio and podcast. This is The Christian View. We take today's hot, challenging, and not so talked about topics. And we wait against God's word because God does have a view. And I believe strongly more than ever that God's word needs to get out there. And we need to know what his word says. I remember I was teaching a Bible study one time. And this uh, per person came up to me and he said, I wish the Lord gave us a manual on how to do life. Huh? And I looked at him and I was like, he did. He gave us the Bible. And so as we go through the topics today, get out your Bibles, your coffee, your pen, and join us. And then if you have questions, feel free to write us. You can visit our YouTube channel and leave comments there. You can go to our website and um, leave comments there as well. But before we get into our topic, I want to introduce to you those sitting around the table today. I have the beautiful Trudy Davis. Thank you for being here. Pastor Lee Adams, who just won an award. Way to go. Way to go. And Candace Kirkpatrick, thank you for being here all the way My from pleasure. Nashville. We love having you. Um, well, today's hot topic is on the identity crisis. Um, and if you turn on the news, you go to the grocery store, you can tell that we are in, our country is in an identity crisis. And I was thinking about that song, Lee, that says, looking for love in all the wrong places. Yes. We are looking for our identity in all the wrong places. Um, my son, who just turned 16, I used to drive him back and forth to school until he got his license a week ago. Um, he said, Mom, what is going on? The world is out of control. He goes, I had to get rid of TikTok. I had to get rid of Instagram wow. because boys want to be girls. Girls want to be boys. Dogs want to be cats. He's like, it just, we don't know who we are. And so mm -hmm. we are in an identity crisis. Um, and you know, Lee, there's no um, clinical diagnosis for right. someone going through an identity crisis, but it used to be that we would have the identity crisis during midlife crisis, right? right? Yes. You know, we're hitting age 50 or whatever the, that age is, and we're like, okay, what am I doing with my life? But it seems to be happening more. younger and younger and more and more. So let's just talk about that. How do we identify when we're going through or someone we love is going through an identity crisis? Well, I think the most simplest way is, first of all, you know, if you look at yourself and you begin to experience some kind of like internal conflict mm -hmm. and you're saying to yourself, I don't know who I am anymore, right. you know, at that moment, you are really kind of experiencing an identity crisis, although at different levels, you know, some people, it may be just for me, I may not know who I am that day because I didn't get enough sleep right, right. <laughs> or yeah, tired, yes. but it doesn't mean that you're having an extensive identity right. crisis, but well, from a psychological standpoint, anytime you go through an intensive self-analysis and it conflicts you to the point you stop and you can't really move forward because you keep having conflicts and you can't go on with your everyday right. life, you probably are experiencing an identity crisis. So I would say, you know, for anyone that's really in that level, that's the first place to begin to look at, right? And, and it's begin okay. to reflect. Right. Yes. It's okay to say, okay, what, why am I here? What's going on in this stage of my life, isn't it? And it's okay to do that, but yes. it's not okay to stay stuck in that downward, right. that downward spiral. Yes, and you know, Satan, like you say, the Bible, it has our great road map. He is the father of identity crisis, right. and he attacks our identity more than anything. Mm -hmm. He actually said to Jesus, are you truly, if right. you're truly yes. the son of God? And so he knew Jesus was the son of God. Yes. And if he, if Satan will attack Jesus's identity, yes. how much more yes. is he after yes. us? And quickly, you know, one thing that I learned from this is that Eric Erickson, you know, the yes. father of psychology, he does say that our identity is formed during adolescence. Yes. And why wouldn't this identity crisis for adolescents trying to change themselves in every mm -hmm. different direction be so purposeful. It's so purposeful and targeted by Satan. Because he wants to destroy the family, right, yeah, Candace? Right. If he can destroy yes. the family unit yes. and, and keep that in turmoil, then he is going to destroy our identity. He knows he can't take our salvation, no. but he can keep us mm -hmm. right. 
in crisis on earth. Mm -hmm. But our identity begins in the first chapter of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. we were created on purpose, yes. with a purpose, for a purpose, in the image of God. Right. But we, something that you were saying at the beginning about what your son said, mm -hmm. I was doing some research and it says right now, ABC News identified a list of 58 politically correct gender mm -hmm. options. Right. Mm -hmm. I ran through that. I didn't even know what most of those yes, were. Yes. And I just, my heart was yes. broken. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't know who we are, we don't know why we were created right. and what our purpose is exactly. and that God has placed mm -hmm. a plan for our lives. Exactly. And it says in Genesis 127, I created yes. you. I cre yes. He created you in his image. Mm -hmm. yes. But like you said, Trudy, the enemy wants to get in and distort that image. Yes. You know, I was talking to someone else the other day in a counseling office and she was talking about her divorce and I looked at her and I was like, thank goodness your identity isn't in your divorce. And See? she just kind of yes. looked at me mm -hmm. because that's yes. where she was identifying exactly. herself was in that divorce or maybe it's in that addiction or, right. you know, whatever it is, but that's not where identity comes from and in think, Satan's yeah, playbook. Yes. Right. Yeah. I would tell people, you know, like you said, the identity is not in that. You know, our identity is not in the crisis, but our identity is in Christ. Right. And I think, you know, people can always remember that, you know, because when we go through things, the devil will tell us, you know, if you have had, depending on what you experienced as a young person, maybe, you know, you felt disrespected, maybe you felt rejected, you begin to take on that yes. I am rejection, right. I am, mm -hmm. you know, discouraged. Right. But, mm -hmm. you know, the Bible tells tells us, you know, when we begin to talk, he says, I'm blessed, you know, right. not just blessed, but I'm above and, you know, not beneath, Amen. you know. So when we begin to make those kind of confessions of really understanding our identities in Christ, that shift happens, you know, away from just looking at ourselves as just being mere humans, but we are Christians having that supernatural experience and we have Christ on the inside. Amen. And I think that's the most important thing that we should be teaching our children yes. is who you are in Christ on a daily basis. Exactly. You're not your grades. You're not the car you drive. And that doesn't most change. Definitely. That day -day. doesn't change day to day. Yes. You are absolutely right. We'll be right back with more on identity crisis here on The Christian View. Don't go away. the Christian View. We're talking today about the identity crisis in the U.S., in our families, in our communities, in our churches. Um, and at the break, we were talking a little bit about social media and how social media is really wrecking havoc, not only in the youth, but in adults and in relationships. I saw a video on Facebook the other day of two people hugging. I guess they were husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, man and wife. They were hugging and behind them, they had their phones. Mm. So they weren't even really interacting with their embrace because they were too busy looking at their phones. And wow. they said statistics Basically, the first thing you pick up when you get up in the morning is your phone and you start scrolling through and it's the last thing you do when you go to bed. And the average adult is spending over 2.5 hours yes. on social media. Mm -hmm. And so Trudy, it has to be play, mm -hmm. playing with our minds mm -hmm. it's, with that identity crisis. It has to be filtering in and feeding into that identity crisis. So let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, and it, statistics prove that it is filtering into the identity crisis. But like we talked about earlier, until we can love and accept ourselves, mm -hmm. most of our problems stem from the fact that yes. we don't love and accept right. ourselves. Mm -hmm. So then enter social media where we're looking at everyone else's right. perfect life, perfect body, you know, perfect career, and we start to crumble mm -hmm. because we fall into the trap of comparison. Mm -hmm. Right. And comparison is a tool that Satan uses and it causes, and it leads to depression. Mm -hmm. Right. But yet, because you, those dopamine responses are hit every time oh, you look yes. at a Facebook posting or a social media posting, it pulls you back in. So even right. though it may be impacting you negatively, right. you're still drawn by the dopamine response that you get from looking at social mm -hmm. media. So once again, if we can just use God as our, he gives us a mind of, of discipline right. and self-control and knowing that we mm -hmm. are created in his image. And then you embrace that other people can have their life. But I did hear someone say, make sure your real life is better than your Instagram. Amen. Yeah. Because oh. a, Instagram, you can, you can, you can, you can put your own false reality yeah. on there and then you start living in a false reality but yeah. you know as a counselor I'm sitting across the, the the couch from someone and you think about okay your earthly father is supposed to be a representation of your heavenly father and yes. you know unfortunately the family has gotten a little bit messed up from God's plan and so when you think about that we have to realize that our heavenly father he loves us so much and even yes. though maybe our earthly father has you know dropped the ball or has gone missing or or whatever they've done we have a heavenly father and that's 
that's where we get our identity from. Right. And then we have the Holy Spirit. Right. And a lot of times they equate the Holy Spirit with, with the mom. And so if your mom wasn't a nurturer or your mom wasn't yeah. a comforter mm -hmm. or your mom wasn't a, you know, the protector, right. you have a warped view of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so I think, you know, as Trudy said, wow. we've got to hone in on who God really is for us, right. who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is, and that's where we're going to, our identity is going to flow out of that, don't you think? Oh, I agree. That was very well said. Mm -hmm. I never thought of either of those like that. It's funny, I was doing the research on, like, how was social media, media playing a part in this identity crisis, and I came across this article called Me Versus My Social Media Self, mm. and then it said why Gen Z is mm. the saddest generation wow. for those who have performed their entire adolescence online, and then they describe the moment that they realize that they had to stop caring so much about their online selves and start caring and working on their real selves. and. I am blessed to know a lot of Gen Zers who are phenomenal. Right. They are grounded in the Lord mm -hmm. and who they are, and they are doing incredible work for the kingdom. Right. I love them all dearly. Wow. I'm blessed to know them. But for the most part, this is accurate. I'm a part of a television show called Vindication, and episode six called The Facade right. addressed the identity crisis mm -hmm. and did a great job. And Sherry Rigby, who's yes. a guest host yes. on here, is just finishing rapping on a feature film called identity crisis. Right. Wow. So We're speaking to our culture yes. about, again, taking back, like you said, who we right. are in Christ yes. and not what others say. And I think that's good. It's, it's we, not what others say or nor what others think. Right? Yes. We have to be, and I know yes. it's hard, y'all listening out there, you, you might be struggling yes. going through the hardest season of your life and you're trying to find out who you are, yes. but there is hope on the other side through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There is there is freedom to know who you are, because I struggled, I don't know if y'all have ever struggled, right. but I struggled with who am I, why am I here, you know, the negative things that were said about me or spoken over me in my early yes. years, but knowing that I have a Father in Heaven. Right. And yes. that's where it has to come mm -hmm. back to. We have to be able to put down social media, yes. you know, encourage our kids, right. because it's it's stealing yes. their lives. But we have to also, like you said, warn them of the dangers. Like you were yes. saying earlier, though, so many kids now, unfortunately, the parents use um, this technology oh, yes. to keep them busy. Yes. And what ends up happening is, like you say, they're interacting more with the technology than right. they are with their natural fathers or mothers. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, this false sense of reality changes who they are. It really right. like affects their thinking. They begin to think that, okay, if I don't have this many followers mm -hmm. or if right. I don't get this many oh, likes, yeah. you know, yes. that's how people define themselves. I and might not be as important yeah. as, as she posted the same thing, but she got more likes than I got. Right. And, and that's mm -hmm. just the the trap of the enemy, and then you think they're your real friends. Mm -hmm, yeah. I have five thousand friends on Facebook. Well, right, you know, I'm right. like, I'm, you know, I'm right. overflowing with friends. Yes. And you know, back to my son, he was doing something. He goes, Mom, they're just, they're not my friends. They're just, right. they're just yeah. someone in the internet somewhere. You know, yeah. and so right. we, we have to really understand yes. reality versus false exactly. reality. Right. A friend of mine was telling me uh, that his daughter came to him and, and she's only nine and she's so precious and Aww. she said, Dad, I'm not, I can't wear my hair pulled back anymore because I learned on TikTok that my forehead is too large. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's, and I was like, I wonder yeah. how she learned that on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But that shaping that little nine-year-old's right. right. view of herself to be like something that social media told her she needed to be. And that's what the, one of the research articles I read, it says social media can leave you it cause you to see yourself different and leave you dissatisfied and overall impact your mood. Comparison. Right. Yeah. And that's where this yes. depression comes yes. in, anxiety comes yeah. in, you know, you know, even going into debt because I have to do all, I was meeting yes. with someone the other wow. day, she goes, I needed to look a certain way, so I had to go into debt to look that way. And that's not no. what our no. Father wants for no. us at all. He wants us to know our full identity in Christ. So we'll be right back with more on the identity crisis and how you can overcome the chaos and confusion of the identity crisis. Don't go away. the Christian view. We're talking about the identity crisis going on in our families, our communities, our churches, and in our own hearts. We talked a little bit about, in the first segment, about how to recognize an identity crisis. And then we talked about social media and how social media is playing a huge role in just stealing the identity of our kids, our marriages, our relationships. So now we're going to shift gears and talk a little bit about how you can overcome because we know that there's freedom. But you may be sitting at home thinking, well, yes. how do I overcome this? How do I know who I am in Christ? How do I 
find my identity in Christ. So we're going to talk about that and um, talk about how you do that. So Candace, let's just let's just get going. Well, the first thing I would say is pay attention to what you're telling yourself mm -hmm. and what voices you are listening mm -hmm. to. That's good. That's the first thing I would say. And to know what voices you should be listening to, number two is dig into the Word. There is so much power in the Word of God, and I think if we fill our mind with God's Word, then there won't be room for Satan's lies. Right. So last time I had spoken about a book called More Power to You by Margaret Feinberg, mm -hmm. and it begins with 90 seconds of declarations that you say out loud that are scriptures reminding yourself who you are. And right. I think we need to declare God's word over ourselves, over our family, over our situation. Yes. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. Three, pray and ask Jesus to expose Satan's lies. Yes. And I think Satan's if we know that his that he is a liar as it says in John 8 and let him that our identity is not in the crisis but in Christ as you said our identity is not in our past our identity is not in our mistakes and our failures and how others define us or even old tapes we have listened to because therefore if anyone is in Christ he Amen. is a new, new creation the right. old is gone the new has come Four, embrace who you are in Christ with all your heart and walk in freedom for because Christ came to set us free, you are free indeed. You are a child of God. You are a new creation. You are fearfully made. You are chosen, forgiven, redeemed. You are bought with the precious mm -hmm. blood of Christ. You are his ambassador. You are the salt of the earth. You are a light Amen. on the hill. Yeah. Amen. And I think about what one thing you did say is what are you listening to? Because yes. a lot of times, you know, when I'm in the counseling room, I talk to people, I'm like, you kind of hear three voices. You hear your voice. Yes. yes. You hear the enemy's voice, which is condemning and, yes. and shaming. But then you hear the Father's voice. Yes. yes. And I think it's really, we need to really practice hearing God's voice yes. more than, and then when the enemy comes in, we yes. say, you know what? That is a lie mm -hmm. and it needs to go back to the pit mm -hmm. of hell. And this is the truth that I need to place over me right now. Because it's so easy when you've walked a certain way for so long and believed a certain thing for so long, for that to be sound so familiar and to feel so comfortable yes. with the negative identity exactly. crisis. And so it's learning how to decipher the voices yes. and then walking it out in truth. Because you can't have two thoughts at one time. You can't have fear and faith. You can't have love and hate. Right. You just can't carry two thoughts at the same time. That's awesome. But and also crank up the worship music mm -hmm. yes. because that has not only solid theology, but it's reminding you who God is and yes. who he says you right. are. Right. Yes. That's good voices coming into your exactly. head. Exactly. And I like how you set this segment up saying overcoming mm -hmm. the chaos and confusion. We are, if you're a Christian, you oh, are an overcomer. Yes. And you yes. have to believe that. You have to tell yourself that. And I love the saying, Jesus is the cure for the insecure. Yes. So if you're Amen. feeling insecure about who you yes. are, you are not listening to Jesus mm -hmm. because he would right. never tell you that. He loves you. He created you. And he has a calling on your right. life. And yes. all this chaos and confusion gets in the way of that calling that Jesus has. Right. For you. Because again, Satan knows that he, if you're if you're a daughter or son of the king, he can't take yeah. your salvation, yes. but he can make you miserable on oh, earth yes. if we let him. And so truly, I think the choice is up to us. Yeah. You know, it's a hard yes. battle sometimes to fight. Yes. I mean, I know when I was going through my identity crisis, it was not fun. It wasn't easy. But anything that's worth is not always yeah. fun and yes. it's not always easy. Right. And so you have yeah. to push yeah. through to the Absolutely. other side. But or everybody would yes. have it. I think too, you know, that uh, we first must understand too that, you know, it's it's an internal thing. Yes. It's an internal struggle that we're dealing with. So a lot of times what I find when people are dealing with internal conflicts, even myself, it's because we're trying to make sense of everything. Right. So one of the first things we have to do is, you know, when you're dealing with a lot of chaos and confusion, stop trying to make everything make sense because it's usually not going to make sense. Mm -hmm. I like the strategy Candace was mm -hmm. pointing out about praying, you know. We do have to pray, but then also I think praying for the right things. I teach my kids, you know, pray the serenity prayer. Right. When you don't know anything else, when you're feeling kind of lost, pray the serenity prayer. To me, it's so powerful, you know, yes. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things, mm -hmm. cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. And if we can grab a hold of that, knowing that he will guide us, I think that really that will help us mm -hmm. a lot of times get to that place of peace right. and some semblance to understand and remember mm -hmm. I'm not in control. Amen. Yes. And you know, 
also we're not in it alone. That's yes. so. Exactly. It's it's nice to know that you can have some trusted friends. That's not not a lot, but you know, just a few that you can call and say, you know what, I'm having a bad day, or I'm feeling this way, or and they can come alongside of you and say, first of all, you're not alone. Right. Second of all, I've overcome it. And, and it's yes. normal. And it's normal. It is right. normal. Yeah. And, and I'm going to walk you through to the other yes. side. Yes. And because too, they should be reminding you of what God's word says. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then helping combat Satan's lies. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. With all of those things. You are chosen. You are redeemed. Yes. You are fearfully made. You are loving. Yes. You are a child of the King of Kings. And speaking those things, speaking those things yeah, those yeah. on a constant, right. on a constant mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like Jonathan. Um, he, um, I was like, hey, I love you. He goes, I know. And so you want to get to that point that God's like, God's up there saying, hey, I love you. I love you. I've right. redeemed you. I've, you're yes. blessed. And we need to go, and not in a prideful way, right. but I know my yeah. Heavenly Father loves me and yes. He has called me and yes. He has equipped me. And the world and all of its shiny objects are not going to last, but that yeah. Knowing who you are in Christ is what's really what's going to last. last. But it's like you said, those those need to be the new tapes. You were talking about right. the old tapes we keep going back to because they're so yes. familiar. Those need to be completely displaced and replaced with those from right. the Heavenly Father. And you know, at first, those thoughts are not going to mm -hmm. seem normal. Mm -hmm. You know, right. they're not, oh, I'm blessed. I'm fearfully and wonderfully yes. made. Right. Oh, God has great. And, and when you've come from a negative background, yes. those are not going to seem right. normal at first. But the more mm -hmm. you say them, the more yes. you do them the more they start to take root. Because it's a stronghold. Right. And so that yes. stronghold's in your mind and Satan's not gonna give up his strongholds no. and his foothold easily. So when you in, are very intentional, as you're saying, about changing that narrative, it seems awkward, but eventually it will become right. the stronghold, which is where Most Jesus wants yes. us to be. Yes, Amen. He, he wants us to be mm -hmm. set That's free. Your def that becomes your default yeah. mode. Yes. Right. And you recognize the lies. Mm. Yes. Whereas before we just believed they were They them. were normal. They yeah. seemed they in fact, seemed right. normal and natural. The money, you know, for counterfeit, they don't study counterfeit mm -hmm. bills. They study the real, the right. real bi bill so that whenever the counterfeit comes up, you can go, not it, not it, not it. Right. That's if we get to that point. Amen. Yeah. And that's and that's where we need to be striving to get to is yes. that point that we, when the enemy comes in like a flood, we allow the Holy yes. Spirit to come in and, and knock all those, those yeah. negativity thoughts out. We'll be yeah. right back with more on The Christian View. Don't go away. to the Christian View. We've had a great discussion today on the identity crisis. I want you to know that you are not alone if you're struggling. Make sure that you get help and just know that God loves you. He is faithful and he is for you. We'll see you next time on the Christian View. Be blessed. <laughs>